Hello humans, welcome back. Code with Connor. This is the Let's Learn Python tutorial series. We are on unit two, topic number two. And now we're gonna to start to get into control flow, do some decision making using if, elif, else statements, talk briefly about short circuit evaluation. Starting to get into programs that can actually do stuff. Sort of. Okay, let's jump right into it. In this program, we're gonna start by talking about if, elif, and else statements. These are statements in Python and other programming languages where we can make decisions. So if one condition is met, do something, otherwise do something else, otherwise, and so on. We can chain them all together. Kind of a go-to example I use for people is in any user interface where you're using a computer or a phone, there's a series of if statements that are essentially based around events being triggered. So if an event gets triggered, then do a certain thing. So if you press that button, do this thing. If you press the G key, do this thing. If you press the up arrow, do this thing. If you tap on this section of the screen, do this thing. And that's kind of where we talk about decision making. We're, we're allowing something to happen only if a given circumstance is met. So here's an example of a program that we're gonna to use to talk a little bit about if statement structure. Now, last lesson we talked about Booleans. Remember, Booleans are not just variables that evaluate true or false, but they're also any messy statement involving conditional and logical operators that has to yield an end result of either true or false. It has a binary result. So the beauty of Boolean statements is that because they always evaluate to true or to false and nothing else, we can use those Boolean statements when making decisions. So when we write an if statement, for example, we're gonna have this structure of if, and then this statement that immediately follows the word if has to be a Boolean statement, which means it has to evaluate to either true or false. It can't evaluate to anything else. Okay, now syntax. Syntax means the way we actually write this out. So you'll notice if, then I have a Boolean statement, then I have a colon, and then I go to a new line. Now, this is important in Python. Python is an indentation matters language. So Java, for example, is an indentation doesn't matter language because it uses braces to encompass its code blocks. Python uses indentation. So Indenting is the tab key on your Windows keyboard, and it's gonna pop it in. It's not the same as just pressing spacebar over and over again. It's a different character, okay? It's a backslash T character. So you wanna make sure you use the tab key. So that lines that up as being inside the if statement. Now I can have a whole bunch of code in here, and it's all considered to exist inside that if statement, which means that code that's indented here will only run in the event that this Boolean is true. If this Boolean evaluates to true, then it will run the code inside of the if statement. So I have a series of if statements chained together. If age is greater than 19, I'm basing this on where I'm at in Nova Scotia, then you're old enough to purchase alcohol and cannabis in Nova Scotia. If age is greater than or equal to 18, then you're old enough to vote in Nova Scotia. If age is greater than or equal to 16, then you're old enough to drive in Nova Scotia. If age is less than 16, then you've still got some growing up left to do. And where did I get age? I got it as an integer from the user using user input, okay? Let's run this and just kind of play around with it a bit and then we'll dive into the next part, which is the elif and the else part of this structure. So when I run this, it asks for an age. Why don't we start young? So seven. So it says you've still got some growing up left to do. That's behaving as intended. Let's say I enter 16, okay? It says you're old enough to drive in Nova Scotia, okay? Let's say I enter 18. So now it's printing old enough to vote in Nova Scotia followed by old enough to drive in Nova Scotia. So if we were to predict what it'll say when I enter 25, it prints all three. So it prints old enough to purchase alcohol and cannabis, old enough to vote, old enough to drive. And if we go back to our code and we look at that, this is if you're older than 19, print this. If you're older than 18, print. If you're older than 16, print. So there's no otherwise, there's no else involved here. It's just if this, do this. If this, do this. If this, do this. The logical chains we can create come from using else and elif statements. Elif just means not that, but maybe this. So if I think about it, if you're older than 19, print this. Else, if you're older than 18, print this. So we're only going to print the thing that they're recently have been able to do due to age. 
and then L if you're older than 16 and print this. And then I'm actually going to replace all of this with just else and a colon. And that is kind of a catch all. So this the way this works. If you're older than or equal to 19, it's going to print this. Now, what's really, really cool about if and L if and L structure in programming languages is if this is true, the programming language knows to automatically skip all else related statements that immediately follow the if. So if this is true and it prints this, Python will automatically skip all of these right down to the non-indented code after the else statement. So if I were to print done here, what you would find is if I'm bigger than 19, it's going to print this statement, skip all of these because it doesn't care if they're true. I already got my one that's true, so I don't need the else. I don't need the else if I'm done. And if this one was false, then it goes to the next and checks. And if this one was false, then it goes to the next. And if this one was true, then it prints and then it bails on the entire if, elif, else structure. So this is where we can create these kind of chained conditionals that are really great. Let's run this now and just see how it looks different. So I'll enter that 25 again. And now it prints that top one, old enough for alcohol and cannabis, and then immediately prints done. Because all of this gets skipped. Because we've already had a true statement in the first if. So the else's or the else ifs do not apply in that situation. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Be careful about indentation. Don't forget your colons. And remember, these can be any Boolean operator. So you can create crazy big Boolean statements here that evaluate to true or false if you want to. They can have ands and ors and nots and all the craziness in them. Uh, and then this is the structure, this if, elif, else structure. Now, a couple questions. Can you do it without the else statement? So delete the else statement and run it, seven. Nothing happens. Absolutely, you can do it. The else statement is there if you want it, if you need it. Okay? Now, an error that you might see come up from time to time would be something like this. So, what I've done is I've ha I have an else statement, but look at what's happening. If I look down my indent line, if, elif, elif, print, else. This else is not going to be linked to this if because this print statement is blocking it and getting in the way. Now, I'm going to save it and run it just so you can see. Doesn't like it. Can't do that else because it's not coming after part of that if statement, that sequence. So just be on the lookout for that. All right, that's the if, elif, and else structure. Super important. Not crazy complicated, but you'll use it all the time. Okay, next we're going to jump down to a slightly harder one uh, because it's going to introduce us to a topic called short circuit evaluation. So I'm just going to walk through the code. So I have n, which is a variable. That's going to be an integer coming from the user, points received. d, which is a variable, uh, is an integer taken from the user, total points possible. Now I'm going to walk you through my if LFL structure. So in my if, here's my big condition. Now you notice I used brackets. Totally fine to use brackets. Okay, in Python 3, most programming languages use them by default just to kind of separate your statements. I like to use them because I'm a Java guy, but it works well. So you'll notice I'm using the exclamation point for not equal. That's totally fine in these mathematical or numerical statements to check if two things are not equal. So if the denominator or D is not zero and, this is my logical operator, N divided by T is greater than or equal to 0 0.5, then you pass the test and your average was n divided by d times 100, just a percentage calculation. Now, yes, I turned it into a string and I added the percentage symbol at the end. None of that's new. Okay, we already were comfortable with that. L if d is not zero, then you failed. Okay, and then last, cannot divide by zero. So let's just think through the structure. If the denominator is not zero and my average is over 0 0.5, then it's going to print I passed and then it's going to print my percentage. If it makes it to the elif, it means either denominator was zero or I didn't pass. So I'm checking, is the denominator not zero? If the denominator is not zero, then the only reason I could have made it here is because I failed. So then I failed. And then if I made it to my else, the only way I made it there 
is because I had a denominator value of zero. So then my else just says cannot divide by zero. Now what's beautiful about this, this division right here, it should break your code if you put a D value of zero in. But remember what we talked about last lesson with AND statements. An AND statement is only true if both values that go into it are true. Well, if the denominator is equal to zero, then this Boolean statement, D not equal to zero, is gonna be false. Because if D was zero, then D is equal to zero. So D is not equal to zero, that statement is gonna yield false. Well, guess what? There is no point in looking at the other side of an AND if the first input is false. So what happens is the code actually never reads this if the denominator is false, which means your code never tries to divide by zero. So this is what's called short circuit evaluation. It's great. It's great for like in place of try and accept statements. It's just like a quick catch to make sure that something doesn't happen that you know is gonna break your code. So you check it first with an and, and that way this code isn't even gonna try to run if the thing that you were trying to avoid happened, okay? So this is a great little example of doing a, a test average calculation using the user input values and short circuit evaluation. So let's run that. All right, so if I put a five and a 10 in, you'll see that we get 50%. So it works out, and it says that we passed. Good, let's run it again. Let's do three out of five. So again, we're working, everything's the way we want. Let's try a not so good one, one out of 10. Okay, we get the message that we're supposed to get, we get the average. Let's run it again. This time let's do two out of three. And we get this big, long, messy decimal, not really pretty, uh, but we can clean it up in a little bit. Let's test the last case. What if I try to divide by zero, tells me I cannot divide by zero. So it's working great to calculate test percentages. Now I'm not limiting them. So for example, I could enter seven out of five and it tells me I got 140%. We could add a limit in for that as well. Let's jump back to the code. We could add another and on these that says that, that n has to be less than or equal to d so that they can't score some outrageous amount of points. And we can add that to both of these. Now the problem there is they can reach the else and not have it be anything to do with the denominator. So I would have to either generalize this error or add another elif in the place. So I could add an elif n is greater than d, cannot have more than total points. So I save that and run it, and try that same trick again cannot have more than total points. Awesome. Maybe you can catch one more error in there, which is that we're allowing the user to enter something under zero. Again, can be made a quick fix with an and, this has to be greater than zero, and then another elif to catch it. So you start to get the idea of how we can chain these together to create this. Now to fix the other problem, we can do rounding. There's a round function uh, in Python, which is great. It just looks like this, round brackets, and then the number I want to round, which is going to be whatever comes out of that calculation, comma, the number of decimal places I want it to round to. So this is going to take my percentage value and round it to two decimal places. I'm just going to copy that into both of these. And that way, when I run my code, if I get a messy one, it's going to round it off to two decimal places, which is perfect. It's exactly what I'm looking for. So you start to see how that if-elif structure, combined with the Booleans, in those if statements, you can really do some cool stuff with it. All right, I'm gonna comment this out, and we're gonna go quickly look at the challenge for unit two, topic two, which is if elif. Here is our challenge. You're gonna write me a quadratic formula root solver. Uh-oh, math stuff. Yeah, computer science and math are connected. I mean, it's a reality. It's not always gonna be the case, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of math roots here. The logic, the problem solving piece is all, very math heavy in terms of mindset. So quadratic formula root solver. Um, so you're gonna prompt the user to enter A, B, and C. You're gonna store them all as floats because they don't have to be integers. Then you're gonna use an if, elif, and else statement so determine if they have two, one, or zero real roots. Now, if you don't remember how to do this, the quadratic formula, which is X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A, I know. Uh, the quadratic formula underneath the root sign is what's called the discriminant. 
uh, b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant is what's going to tell you whether or not you have 0, 1, or 2 real roots. So if the discriminant is negative, you have 0 real roots. Now we're gonna, not going to do any imaginary calculations here. We're just going to print to the screen, you have no real roots. If the discriminant is equal to 0, then you have one real root, or technically two, two real and equal roots. But we'll just call it one real root, and we'll print that actual root to the screen. And if they have a discriminant that is greater than zero, then it means you have two unique real roots, and we'll print them both out to the screen, okay? Let's say I had the quadratic x squared plus 2x minus 3. Let's run this code and see how it works. So it asked me for an a, so x squared is 1, uh, 2x minus 3. And it tells me I have two real roots. Root 1 is 1, root 2 is negative 3. Awesome. If I were to enter one that had no real roots, it would say so. If I entered one that had one real root, it would only print one of the roots. This is super useful to write this quick little Python script. It's a great way to calculate using a quadratic formula, and it's not crazy complicated to do. So I'm gonna throw that out there to you as your challenge to do this time. Feel free to do some Googling on the actual quadratic formula and discriminants if you wanna remember how to do it just in math and then pull that into Python. And that's how we'll start the next video is by going over this challenge. So thanks for sticking with me. That's the end of unit two topic number two, which was if and else stuff. If you got your challenge. You're doing great. We'll see you back here in the next lesson. Have a good one. See you humans. Oh, wait, did you like, share, subscribe? Do all that stuff. I love it. It's great. Okay, now you can go. Bye.